welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep, number whatever, four, I think. I even started off boring by giving you the number of the session. No one cares about the number really, do we? They're all different. It's not like they, not like I leave you with a, a cliffhanger at the end of each episode. It's like you're not running to your laptop or your phone to listen to the next next day to find out what happened. No, it's really just me talking to you. Well, in a way, it's took me talking at you, like one of those really annoying friends that just talk at you got no interest in listening to you got no interest in hearing your what you've got to say I just want to talk at you luckily I can do that because I don't have to be interrupted by you or by anyone else I can enjoy just listening to my boring voice over and over again and the benefit of this for you is you don't have to pretend to be interested you don't have to force your eyes to stay open you can just listen to me and I could be talking about absolutely anything I could be looking at the bedroom floor and counting the balls, the little balls, the coloured balls that my Andre, my ferret, plays with. They're darted all around the flat. And I could just count them to you and say, oh, there's one there, it's red. And there's another one near the radiator, it's blue. That one's got a, looks like it's got a bit of egg on it from when Andre had a an egg can you imagine actually sitting in a room with someone and talking to you like that and you pretty much want to do anything other than stay awake just want to go to sleep and just want to just also remember only listen or watch these sessions, these sleep sessions when you can safely close your eyes. My website is jasonnewland.com. I'm also I've got podcasts. I'm on Podomatic, I'm on SoundCloud, I'm on iTunes, I'm on Spreaker, I'm on Podbean, I'm everywhere. So quite easy to find. Just put in Jason Newland or if you want to find these ones just put in the the title of the session let me bore you to sleep google that and you'll find me very easily that was a bit creepy wasn't it you'll find me very easily so the point of these is there is no point other than to relax and even if it's not a case of sleeping right now it gives you an opportunity to rehearse your mind slowing down gives you an opportunity to rehearse that feeling of such maybe boredom but not boredom in a uh, a frustrating way. Boredom in a you just don't really care. You just it's as if your brain is just automatically switching off. I've talked in the past about the idea of an office block a big building full of offices 
and you're just starting at the top and switching the lights off in each office switching off the different parts of your brain which are not needed because remember all the automatic stuff and yeah I'm gonna say works automatically I guess I didn't need to use the word automatic twice there but you don't need to actually give any attention to your body's processes as far as your liver working, your kidneys, your heart, your lungs, your blood flow. You don't none of that is need any of your attention. It doesn't need any anything. Because when you're asleep, that all works fine. And of course when you're awake. Otherwise you'd I guess be a zombie if it didn't work when you're awake. So I spent too much time watching The Walking Dead. So this gives you just an opportunity to don't you love the word opportunity? It's not really an opportunity, it's just an option, it's a choice. There's nothing glamorous about it. It's a choice you choose. You can listen to me or not listen to me. That is your choice, you have the right to choose. And you know what, if you're living in a life that maybe for some reason you feel that you have no choices maybe you feel that you know everything's on top of you and you can't you know you don't really have a choice and everything is kind of dictated life is dictated to you well you have a choice here you also have a choice in everything else but it's you know it's about perspective I guess it's about how far you're willing to go but in this situation you can choose there's no teacher forcing you to listen to me there's no parent no children no one's forcing you to do anything right now this is completely your choice to listen to my voice and to get really bored but not in a bad way because it'd be a little bit silly to I'm guessing to listen to me especially listen to something an audio video which has the title let me bore you to listen to that and then get frustrated because it's boring that would be mildly ridiculous so this isn't that kind of session to really have any emotions this is about pretty much letting go of everything you may be wondering am I just going to keep talking about what this session is or am I going to bloody well get on with it the answer to that is I really don't know I'm just going to do and say whatever I want just going to chat my intention behind this is for you to just let go and to have trust that even though I'll say some silly things sometimes and at the same time my intention is to help 
as you would know or you will know or already know if you've been following what I've been doing for the last 12 years so this has been recorded in 2018 in March I think it's the last day of the month today 31st of March so tomorrow I might do another let me bore you to sleep but I might start shouting in it or something as a little April Fool's trick but probably won't or can you imagine that doing a session you fall asleep and the person you're talking starts shouting that would be a bit uh, I think word, the word is wrong actually it would be very uh, I'm just moving me covers and me bed around I'm sitting on me bed <sighs> so I'm wondering how you're feeling how your body is because you might find if you were to listen or watch this session every day I say watch because I am going to be putting these audios onto YouTube as videos so just that's why I say watch so that those on YouTube uh, even though why would anybody be watching it they'd, they'd be turning it on and listening I guess um, but I have no control over that so how are you feeling? I realise the answer to that question could be anything Got uh, you got a little bit of scratching as well in the background. That's Andre trying to get into the bedroom, which is a bit annoying because I should have put him in his cage while I did this. It's hard to predict his behaviour, but he was having sex with his girlfriend which is a an old slipper of mine as the head and uh, some carrier bags as the body that's just what he does so I didn't want to interrupt him while he was doing that so I left him thinking that he'd be distracted because sometimes I'll go out when he's in the middle of it and I'll come back and he'll still be in the middle of it well, maybe coming to the end of it, or just coming. So it's it'll, it'll be at it for quite a while. But today, for some reason, he's he hasn't. Maybe he uh, was a bit premature today. <laughs> I got too excited. But anyway, let's let's not focus on the magic of ferret love so as I asked about how are you and I realise you can't answer well, you could I suppose you could say out loud how you are maybe that's something you could do say how you are how do you feel right now if you say that out loud now and having said that out loud how do you physically feel
sometimes saying something out loud can be a release it can give you more of a perspective more of a a connection it allows you to connect physically with the emotions my emotions right now is I wish Andre was in his cage instead of scratching at the door that's my emotions that's what I'm thinking why didn't I put him in his bloody cage so that he didn't disrupt this recording even so I let him in here he'll be making a bit of noise in here I'm just wondering good thing about just relaxing you know what I'm going to go and let him in because I'm not enjoying the scratching and unfortunately he doesn't give up. It's like a ferret with a bone. Or a ferret with a hard on. Morning. Oh. I've got him here now. Now you're here, you're gonna stay here. Behave. Good boy. So the the good thing about these sessions or any session, there's something special and really healthy with allowing yourself to have a break from whatever it is you're doing. Even if it's for 10 minutes or 20 minutes or half an hour, if you can have half an hour or 20 minutes or 10 minutes or even five minutes, you know, longer the better, I think sometimes, but it doesn't have to be a long period. If you can have that time where you're not involved with your day to day life, if you can have some space where you're not talking to your children or your parents or your siblings or your work colleagues or if you're on your own you can have a bit of time when you're not on your own because I'm here with you you've got Andre here with you he's now laying on my lap and I'm stroking his head And that's the strange thing, well, not strange, but it's kind of, I think it's quite miraculous. Not miraculous, it's not the right word, but lovely. I think quite a lovely thing is because of the internet, you don't have to really feel alone. You may physically be, you know, on your own like I am really apart from Andre but you don't being able to listen to somebody being able to listen to me or anyone else it doesn't just have to be me you could listen to anyone you wanted there's thousands of podcasts out there and instead of being the same recording over and over again which you would get, you know, if you go back 20 years, you'd have to buy uh, an audio recording if you wanted to listen to someone speaking. And it would be, you know, fairly expensive. Well, I don't know, depending on how much money you've got. And it'd be the same conversation, the same words being said. 
but with me not just with me but I am possibly more prolific than the average person online when I do stuff sometimes I can go periods when I do nothing though Andre is staying up here he's trying to get off so we can go and scratch at the carpet and make noise I'm not going to let you the good thing about this is every session is different of course there's crossovers there's similarities it's still the same voice I'm probably still using some of the same words um, sometimes I probably sound more boring than others you know not every session has a ferret scratching at the bedroom door luckily and you can hear him moving around probably in the background well, it's not really, it's quite close to the microphone. He's on the bed and he wants to get off. And I don't want him to get off because he's naughty. Not really naughty though, is it? You're just doing what you do. The same way as crocodiles. They're not evil or nasty because they attack animals or people. That's just what they do. They just eat and they attack people it's horrible for the people being attacked and the animals that's just what they do they don't mean it in an evil way do they I'm not sure what the word evil even means to be fair it's just uh, describing an action that we can't really comprehend I think that's all it is describing an action that someone else does that we can't even imagine being able to do ourselves that's I guess what we attribute the word evil to but then we're all different so we all have those things I can't imagine how anyone could eat peanut butter or how anyone could eat mayonnaise does that mean they're evil hmm. don't worry I'm not I'm not comparing eating mayonnaise to uh, genocide or anything like that imagine if we could all be like a ferret let me tell you how a ferret is Andre he can be full of energy and he can fall asleep within seconds Sometimes he climbs up onto my chair when I'm sitting there, the big black recliner that I've got. Um, and he climbs up and he's all wiggly and probably trying to eat my food or trying to do something misbehaving. And I'll hold him and I'll, I'll stroke him for a bit and maybe he'll calm down for a bit, for a little while, and then he'll fall asleep. He doesn't mean to fall asleep, but he's just he's trying to keep awake but he's never far from just dozing off and when he does fall asleep he really goes deep and then at some point he'll wake up and he'll look at my, me and I'll make him jump I think he just looks at my face and thinks what the hell is that how did, how did, I, how did I get here where am I I don't think he's very aware when he wakes up. He's now laying on his back. His legs and hands are up in the air. I'm stroking the bottom of his chin. And he loved that just for a second. I think he went to sleep there for a second. But this is a time when he wants to go out for a walk. He wants to. He wants me to take him for a walk. Don't you, Andre? Yes. Now he's giving me kisses. This would have been a good video to have filmed, having him on the bed like this. But that's okay. These sessions are recorded for audio. 
so far this has been a longer session than normal but it's all about allowing the mind to calm and as I was saying before there's something special about being able to give yourself some room some space to just be on your own or to be yourself to close your eyes and to give up those needs, those wants, those expectations, you know, those rules about how you think or feel that you should think or feel. You know, how give up those ideas of in a sense given up all your beliefs just for a, a short period of time right, I've now locked in underneath my jumper so hopefully you'll calm down and maybe go to sleep don't worry tomorrow he will be in his cage or next time so he won't be disturbing the session I did think when he started scratching the door that maybe I should start again, but I was already like 10, 15 minutes in, I think. So I just thought, nah, couldn't be bothered. Besides, you know, I'm on a roll here, and this is probably the uh, one of the most exciting sessions we've ever done, I think, don't you? <laughs> He is going absolutely hectic trying to get out of my jumper. Right, I'm going to let him go now. Oh, he's gone. See? All he wants is... Didn't want to come in here. And that's all that he's coming here again. Andre doesn't like a closed door. Any door that's closed upsets him. And he has to open the door. Once it's open, that's it. Got no interest anymore. He doesn't like closed doors. And he's been spoiled a little bit because he's had access to every room in my home. Instead of just being kept in one room, which I probably should have done. So he's pretty much trashed every room. But it's his territory now. It's quite he can't take away something that he's got. It's you know, it's difficult it's easier to not give someone something. But if you take away what they've already given them, you can't take away it. It's just wouldn't be fair on him, I don't think. So having that space, given up on these self-limiting beliefs and ideas, seems like a good idea. I'd say like, you know, all the time, but at least test giving them up for a short period of time maybe 10, 15, 20 minutes, half an hour. Because there's a thing with, uh, with a think, a thing with Catholics where you give up stuff for Lent. And I think we're just coming to that, aren't we? Or it's sometime around Easter, I think. And we're coming up to Easter. Easter is in two days' time. It's Good Friday today. I mean, Easter really for Christians or anyone that is sort of 
uh, Adam, you know, believing in Jesus and that that stuff. Easter is more important than Christmas. You know, Easter resurrection and all that stuff. Anyway, so it's Good Friday today. Um, yeah, I hope it is a Good Friday. That's all I've got to say on that one. I hope it is a Good Friday. But being able to just give up your prejudices, maybe. Maybe you've got a, an issue with a specific type of person. Well, you give that up. In my country, there's this whole uh, Brexit thing going on, and during the Brexit, we had a referendum, and during that period, oh, Andre's come back. During the Brexit um, thingy, there is the different sides really trying to get the public to separate and to they were really playing on prejudice and um, hatred and stuff like that and it was a little bit disturbing to see so if you've got any of those silly thingies going on in your head you know opinions and you know we've all got bits and bobs haven't we which are not particularly clever they're not there's no kind of logic behind them maybe maybe let that stuff go as well because this is a space where you can test that maybe test it and say well you know what maybe you'd, maybe you'd be happy without that stuff in your head without those beliefs whatever those beliefs may be doesn't have to be to do with people it could be to do with how you believe you should behave how you believe you should um, live your life how you believe that you should act or you know it could be someone maybe you could be someone could be gay and they believe that it's wrong to be gay and therefore they're they're gonna stay with they're gonna you know maybe be single or be with a woman or a man depending if they're a man or woman you know ultimately they're choosing to be unhappy that's the choice they're making you know to not live your life how what feels right for you so this could be a this could be an opportunity to just test out some of those beliefs that you might have because some of us I think we kind of carry carry some belief systems from my childhood maybe even And we've had so much evidence, possibly, to prove that those ideas and beliefs were just, well, not valid anymore, at least. like someone who lived on a volcano you know a uh, a temperamental volcano maybe they lived below it when they were children so I always had that constant maybe not fear but awareness that you know they may need to 
keep that fear in mind in case they have to get out of their home very very quickly you know day or night and then that, that person moves to New Zealand or Ireland or you know a country where there perhaps aren't any volcanoes I'm guessing there's no but you know somewhere where there's not a volcano they might still be sitting in bed with that you know listening wondering and maybe especially if someone's lived through a volcano eruption they might be listening might be expecting to happen again even though they live in Belgium which is so flat you can actually see the back of your own head so it's you know it's one of those things that oh excuse Andre for sneezing giving yourself time to let go of those beliefs just for a short period of time can be a tester and you know some of that stuff maybe is or could be what causes people to stay awake maybe at night when they want to go to sleep the main thing really is that you take care of yourself and you do what you feel able to do and do what you want to do you know you're listening to this you don't have to let go of limiting beliefs and ideas that may be an opinions that are holding you back You don't have to do that. You no, know, you don't have to do things that will improve your happiness. It's a choice. It's something you can test. It's up to you. And realizing that you do have a choice you can open up your mind to other possibilities other possible situations where maybe you have more of a choice than maybe you realised possibly you're not giving yourself enough credit I know there's people out there that give themselves all the credit but I've not met that many people like that. I'd say the majority of people perhaps don't give yourself enough credit for what you've done, for what you've accomplished. And I know that there's some people that be living in a room and maybe they've gone through alcoholism or they've gone through you know really serious uh, situations in their life and they may be in their 40s or 50s or 60s and they might be thinking what they've done with their life what they accomplished nothing because they used to have a big house you know that might be what's going on in their mind you know they used to have a big house big car great job family and all that stuff and now maybe they're in a room on their own and they don't have a job at the moment fact is they have survived you survived you got through that that person has accomplished more and got through more hardship than many many other people could even imagine why 
why not give yourself some credit for what you have accomplished and so what if if you can't go to a fancy restaurant and you have to get the bus now instead of driving and I, I don't say so what flippantly because I'm in that position but how amazing is it that you got through that you survived that you're still alive you're still able to have enjoyment You're still able to choose to make the choice about whether you listen to some boring English man on a podcast talking, going on and on and on and on. Blah. I could just, I look at that, just come on in and just go blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, blah, blah. And maybe some people would think it's <laughs> the same thing as what I'm doing anyway. Maybe it is. I've allowed this session, or allowed, I've allowed. I've given my, myself permission to record a longer session today. Partly because I think the last two sessions I ended a bit too abruptly, a bit too quickly maybe, but also I know some people like the longer ones when it comes for like sleeping, Andre's trying to bite my toes, but also because of the interruptions from my little furry friend here. scratching at the door and harassing me while I'm trying to concentrate on all the interesting things that I'm trying to remember to talk about Andre has a foot fetish very strange I don't think it's normal for ferrets he's just him he absolutely loves feet not just my feet it's not just a a daddy smell that he likes he he loves feet any foot he will go for he loves sniffing them licking them and biting them basically he's now biting my big toe through my sock and it hurts but he's being fairly gentle at the moment but once he's once he likes it, he goes for it and he bites hard. I don't know why he does it. I'm not really sure. Andre, be gentle, please. Good boy. Oh, he's now laying down to go to sleep goes through periods when he he loves sleeping in different places so but he'll sleep in the same place sometimes for weeks and weeks and weeks and then he'll sleep in a different place so he's got his little bag he's got a, a cat scratcher thing with a big hollow bit where he sleeps underneath there he's got a little box that he likes to sleep in now he likes to sleep with the carrier bags sleeps at the radiator and he likes to sleep on my, on my bed as well sometimes for weeks on end he'll sleep on my bed absolutely loves it it's comfortable it's probably the most comfortable place for him to lay on but he just goes through periods I kind of wish you can see what I was seeing. It was quite cute seeing him climbing on the bed and biting my toes but not hurting me. 
doesn't normally do that. I think it's because I wasn't pulling my toes away from him. If I just leave my toes there, it seems to be happy just to sort of play with them. But if I pull my toes away, it turns into a game for him. And then he bites it because he doesn't want it to be taken away from him. I think that might be what it is. I'm just guessing. And, you know, I'm not going to be able to do a brain scan on him to figure out what's going on in his mind. And if I did do a brain scan, I wouldn't be focusing on the feet. I'd be focusing on trying to get him to do his poos in the proper places. Just stop going to doing a wee in the kitchen. You know, the feet would be way down the line of uh, important things to, you know, get on to understand what's going on in his mind. I'd also try to get him to stop jumping up at the radiator. I've, I've got my jackets hanging above the radiator in the hallway and he's trying to, well he doesn't just try, he actually succeeds in climbing up, jumping up and getting the sleeve of the jacket and then climbing up all the way up the sleeve of the jacket was a coat but it's just something he does and I think he's trying to I think he's trying to go out for a walk or he's trying to maybe he does it until I take him out basically so he's trying to force me by annoying me to take him out for a walk so how long have we done we've done 47 minutes so <laughs> We've done 47 minutes. And this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. I wish I had my camera now because there's a really cute picture of him just laying by my feet. Oh, it's lovely. really strange that I've, well maybe it's not strange I've had Andre for two and a half years now and he's so beautiful there's something so cute about him you know so sometimes I just want to just film him take pictures of him all the time he's so gorgeous he's uh, don't know what it is it's not, I don't think it's even me being biased. I don't always find him gorgeous when he's being, being naughty, but whenever I take him out, the amount of people that stop and tell me how beautiful he is, and he's, you know, he's, nah, I just love him, I suppose. What can you, what can you do? He's my, he's my son, isn't he? So I'm going to see, see him as, being wonderful apart from when he's being naughty so that's it I think for today <sighs> oh yeah also if you're interested you can find my I've got a channel I've got two YouTube channels now. I will have three. Well, I've got three, but only two that have actually got anything on it. There's my Jason Chats vlog, which is my daily video thing I do in the evenings. It's just a vlog, a little journal thing. Um, but also the sleep. Uh, it's basically the channel for the insomnia sessions. It's called Jason Newland's Sleep hypnosis and at the moment there's about 61 or 64 videos on there I'm still uploading them so that eventually there'll be about 83 or something uh, videos but that'll be another couple of days before that's all done and these will be on there eventually so you know you can check out some of my other stuff if you want 
uh, there's a few although when you go on there none of the videos will have many views because they've only just been put up there but some of those videos had huge amounts of view well a lot of views in the past uh, or in previous channels um, so yeah I've had over a million views on my YouTube channels over the years I just happen to be this just is a new YouTube channel I'm trying to separate my stuff now so I'm gonna have a relaxation channel as well which I just um, created yesterday but I haven't uploaded anything there and I will have a chronic pain channel as well eventually so I'm just gonna try and separate everything then you can find it because in the past when I've had like 600 videos they kind of get lost a little bit but if you spread that over it's much easier for people to find if it's just if all the sleep sessions are on one channel so that's what I'm doing now so I'm gonna go you take care subscribe to my website if you want subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want or maybe you just want to just go to the toilet maybe have a Kit Kat that's a chocolate bar I think in this country anyway I don't know what it is there or a tin of soup right you take care and I will see you next time I've been Jason Newland and of course Andre Newland was here as well take care bye